Hello, everyone. Welcome to the IndyPy Web Shootout. We're going to go ahead and get things kicked off here. I hope I didn't double check all of is everyone who's presenting here for the shootout. I see Pradeep. I got Clayton, the Jasons. You got Nathan. All right, awesome. So I'm really excited. This is, this is probably one of the biggest IndyPy events we've done so far. We've been running IndyPy since uh, April of 2007. So we're, uh, we're a consistent, uh, stubborn bunch, I guess, if, anything, if, if nothing else. So speaking of being consistent and stubborn, I wanted to kind of thank our sponsors and go over like, some of the reasons why I love Python, why we love Python, why we're all here. I definitely wanted to invite people into the fold who weren't Pythonistas. I hope there's people from, who here does Rails? I've seen some Rails people. Who's doing uh, PHP? All right, that's PHP folks. .NET? Yeah, you guys can raise your hand. It's OK. <laughs> it's not a problem. We're, we're, we're very, you'll find out about uh, Python people. We're very, very friendly folk. It's not a problem whatsoever. So yeah, I wanted you guys to get exposed to how web is done in the modern Python world. We've got four frameworks coming up. I'll go over them real quick. But uh, again, I want to thank our sponsors for making this possible. Uh, we really couldn't have done it without them. Uh, six feet up, obviously. Uh, we uh, help sponsor and organize. Uh, but we couldn't have done it without the other ones, direct employers. You see the guys wearing the dot jobs uh, shirts around here. That's the direct employers guys. Angie's List. We've got Nathan. Are there any other Angie's List folks here? Yep. Awesome. So we got the Angie's List folks here. And then we got uh, beer sponsorship from Upland. And then their sponsorship, the, the other guys here, we sponsored all the food so you guys could eat and be merry, be happy. Uh, so make sure you thank a sponsor if you see them. Uh, make sure you uh, support local beer. So we love Upland and those folks. So they, they just came out of the woodwork, no problem, and gave us uh, two kegs of beer to, to eat and be merry. So again, thank your sponsors. Uh, this wouldn't be possible without them. We really enjoy the opportunity to do this kind of event here locally. I think it's a great opportunity for Indianapolis, Central Indiana in general, to have a, an event like this. We are recording it. We're going to put it up on the internet. We're hopefully we can uh, package together all the slides, all the projects, and put a nice little overview up, uh, hopefully within the next week, to showcase the, the Python web framework uh, shootout we've done here. So moving on, we love Python. And I put up a post a couple weeks ago on our blog about why I love Python and why we've chosen Python for Six Feet Up. Uh, I've been doing Python since 1998, so I feel a little old sometimes uh, compared to some of these new whippersnappers doing some of the newer languages. But one of the big, some of the big reasons you can see here on the list, Python's just ultimately flexible, fits my needs, stays out of my way. Uh, I don't think I have to sell Python to anybody necessarily in this room, but I wanted to make sure we kind of captured the, the essence of why we're here, the why reasons why we love Python and why it stays, how it makes us more efficient, uh, keeps us quick, agile, you know, getting our work done without having to deal with Java. <laughs> so that, that's the one I wanted to kind of put in there about why I love Python. So tonight, the shootout, uh, or sit-in if you're a pacifist. Thanks, Pradeep. Uh, we are doing four frameworks, Bottle, Django, Flask, and Pyramid. Uh, they all are you know, what we consider to be modern web frameworks along the same lines as you know, like a, a Ruby on Rails style MVC model view controller. I mean, who here does MVC style programming already? So, okay, so I don't really need to explain the whole framework uh, MVC type structure to anyone here in this room. But uh, we've got uh, Bottle, which is, you know, I, I'm not going to steal their thunder. So, you know, these, these are the frameworks. They're going to be presented by these organizations. So, uh, we've got each of the sponsors uh, plus Pradeep from Nth, Ener Nth Energy presenting. Uh, Angie's List will be doing Bottle. Uh, I don't know if they want to talk more about what you guys have been doing when you give your presentation, but they've been using Bottle uh, in their implementations. Direct Employers has a heavy usage of Django. I know they've got a lot of their job sites. They're migrating a lot of things over into Django right now. Uh, Pradeep graciously volunteered to, uh, we said, hey, we want to cover Flask. Who's going to do it? And he said, sure, why not? And he's here to show us how Flask does things in the Python world. And then Six Feet Up, we do uh, quite a bit of, well, we're kind of known for doing a lot of CMS, which has been typically Plone. And as you'll find out, uh, Pyramid has stemmed from our, our anger in Plone. Uh, we, we figured we'd do it right this time, and now uh, we've been very involved in the Pyramid community doing web, web applications with that framework. 
So on to the evaluation process. I want you all to be very, very uh, stringent and stingy with these uh, presenters who are going to be up here tonight. We want to make sure that they're showing you their best and representing their framework as best they can. So what we want to make sure we cover during this presentation is going to be what makes that framework unique, what differentiates them from the other Python frameworks that we're not covering tonight. Uh, we, we kind of felt this was a good sampling of, like I said, those modern frameworks, and we want to make sure we understand what's different about each of them and why you might choose, well, why you might want to choose one of those frameworks over another one for a project you've got in mind, or why you may want to start using one over another if you've never even used Python before. What's going to be attractive about that uh, to you know, newcomers, to seasoned veterans of the web? Why would you want to use one of these frameworks? Uh, when you're, we, we did an application tonight. Each group did the same application. We all started with a to-do app uh, with some specific specifications. They're all up on the GitHub site. But the basics are you need to be able to log in. You need to be able to create a to-do. You need to be able to tag that to-do. And you need to be able to edit and delete that to-do. So kind of your basic CRUD style application. And we figured that would be a good comparison of how each of these frameworks implements each of the, this, this really pretty common task in uh, the web programming world. So we want to talk about the key decisions that were made while implementing that task in your framework. And we want to talk about the pros and cons of your framework. Uh, don't make it all pros. Maybe throw a con in there too, presenters. And then ideal use cases for your framework. Uh, is your framework really good for the single page you know, Google App Engine app? Uh, you know, is Bill Gates you know, evil, you know, yes or no type things? Or is it really meant for like a full-blown uh, knowledge management, content management, uh, giant ERP style scale app? Can you, could you do that with your framework or not? And then a word about IndiePie. So I want to thank all of you who, I mean, I, we've got a lot of new members for IndiePie this uh, past couple weeks with this event coming up. I know many of you haven't ever been to one of our events. We do the second Tuesday of the month at the North Side, North Side Scotties. Uh, they've got a great little, uh, good sized room there. We typically do some kind of presentation. We, it's very similar to night. There'll be food. There's typically beer. We all talk about programming, open source. It's very casual, very easygoing. So I invite all of you to join us. Uh, maybe not everyone at the same time. We're going to get a bigger room. But hopefully you guys all join us for an, our future meetings. The next four meetings, what we're going to do is actually go over the implementation specifically for each of these uh, frameworks. So you can find out a little more in depth because tonight's going to be a more cursory uh, view of each framework. But hopefully, you can find out a little more in depth about each of these frameworks, how the implementations were done, you know, what do the templates look like, what does the view code look like, what do the models look like, how does this interact with the database. So, if you want to find out more about each of them, definitely hit our next four meetings because we'll be talking more in depth about each of these uh, these events or each of the frameworks we talked about here. So, without further ado, I don't want to belabor the uh, event anymore, just me droning on up here. I want to bring up our first presenter. So it'll be Bottle is going first. So Nathan from Direct Employers, come on up, and we'll get this kicked off. So um, uh, Angie's List uses uh, Bottle for really just one um, uh, sort of API project that's sort of gotten bigger um, over the months. Um, so. Um, it, I don't have a whole lot of experience up, you know, other than just that one, uh, that one API project and then also this to-do app. Um, and uh, Roger Dietz back there actually knows way more about Bottle than I do. <laughs> He's like shaking his head. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess I'll start with uh, kind of just a little bit about Bottle. Um, all right, so Bottle is a terrible <laughs> framework. Um, all right, that's it. No. Uh, so, yeah, questions? So it, it's, I, I like to say it's not really a framework. I, it's debatable, but um, uh, in comparison to like Django or, or uh, Pyramid or, you know, uh, some of the other big mature uh, web frameworks in Python, it's, it's really just sort of a micro framework. Uh, there's really not much to it. Um, but it is nice. Um, it mostly just gives you um, a few key things uh, that you can kind of build upon. Routing, uh, a small abstraction over uh, the WSGI, um, and some helpers for uh, different things. 
uh, it's uh, it's uh, so the 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 best use cases uh, for it are when you need to have tons of flexibility uh, for whatever reason uh, and and a, a very like opinionated structure um, won't work um, or uh, the other case and, and this is kind of like what Angie's list did um, uh, we took bottle and uh, sort of ended up with our own sort of MVC framework uh, sort of built on top of it. Um, <clears throat> because uh, by default, it's, it's not really that much of an MVC framework. It's, uh, it's almost too micro for that. Um, uh, the other use case is if you really just want to build something really simple and you know it is going to be simple um, and you don't want the overhead of, of you know, Lots and lots of different files. Um, and the other use case is where you just really like to get your hands dirty with HTTP. It, it kind of um, it it only provides sort of a small abstraction over WSGI. Um, so um, if you already like dealing at that level, you might be comfortable just a tiny bit on top of that. All right. So uh, before I get into the demo, I'll just quickly show uh, what a basic Hello World sort of app might look like. Although it's slightly modified, this Hello World app is a API method that returns JSON. Um, so to use Bottle, you're just, it, it's just uh, all under this one. Um, basically, all you need for the, for the most basic case is uh, route and run. Uh, and this is where you define your route. So this would map to greeting slash whatever you pass in. And then uh, that decorator um, causes, uh, yeah, you know what, I, I just did this wrong. Um, causes this parameter to get passed into uh, the, the parameter for this, uh, this function. And then with, with bottle, um, uh, it sort of uh, adapts various different return types into uh, certain um, HT, uh, HTTP responses for you. So if you return a dictionary, it'll just automatically turn that into JSON for you. Um, and, uh, and then the most basic like built-in web server, you just basically just call run uh, and it will, uh, It'll give you a little, uh, it'll just run a WSGI ref server. So you run that, uh, you call it with, um, let's say, greeting slash Bob, and this, you would just get a, a JSON response like that. And that's really all there is to it. All right, so a quick demo. Let me get out of here and go to. So uh, I'll just try to make this really quick. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. Um, I, um, I wanted to make it look like a sort of basically like a pad of paper. Um, and uh, to, to add a new one, you're just going to click on the next line there. Um, um, enter, enter your. Uh, And uh, I did make it so that um, even though due date is, is uh, required on the server end, like it just will simply use today's date as the, as the date uh, so that you can sort of like, um, if you don't want to enter dates, you can, it'll just line them up in order that you enter them. Um, and something just went wrong there. That's great. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to start the server. My bad. Like a live demo. Yeah, exactly. All right, so back to where we, so yeah, you'd basically enter that, hit done, and that just, 
um, does a you know Ajax uh, post back to the server. Everything here, it, I, I tried to do a, basically a single page application. Um, uh, so, you know, index.html, everything is on index.html, and, and all the interaction is uh, with the server is, uh, is over um, Ajax. There is login, although I'm currently logged in, and I don't want to take the time to do that. So, but uh, yeah, everything like uh, these just are implemented with, um, with uh, you know, push date. Of course, there's only one right now. So, and then of course you can um, you can click you can click one of these uh, labels or tags to get just that one from the server. This is, I'm not really uh, showing it very well because there's only one of them. But I don't want to spend a whole lot of time showing it off. Um, so I'll just go back to the presentation. Um, uh, let's see. All right. Um, okay, so f uh, I created my own sort of framework here called the B3 framework, uh, Bottle, Backbone JS, and Bootstrap. Um, um, and as I said earlier, the um, the, the Bottle app is just basically. Um, uh, just doing um, JSON over HTTP um, because Bottle doesn't really have, it has a templating uh, system, but it's so simple. Um, I just didn't even, I just figured I wouldn't even bother using it. Um, so the, uh, the UI is completely just done as a static file with uh, Backbone and um, uh, Bootstrap. I, um, since uh, Bottle doesn't have a built-in uh, model or ORM sort of layer, I just decided not to even use one, and I'm just simply throwing stuff in Redis. Um, so basically, the app that I wrote is simply only using um, what Bottle provides out of the box. Um, uh, on that note, you can... Um, like you could write a, you could easily write a bottle app that uses SQL Alchemy or something like that to connect to a traditional relational database, and I'm sure that's a pretty common use case. Um, and you could you could also sort of plug in whatever templating library in Python that you're, you know, accustomed to and you like. Um, okay, so um, I'll just show off a little bit of code of you know how how you do stuff in in Bottle. Um, so uh, to save a new to-do, um, we're just simply decorating a, a create to-do method with, uh, with a, uh, a, a post. This basically says it's, a, it's looking for a post with that, uh, with that routing um, pattern. Um, I basically just implemented my own little authorization thing. Uh, there's, Bottle doesn't provide anything for you, so I just built my own. I didn't want to like use uh, some heavyweight solution, so I just wrote a couple methods uh, to do something basic. Um, Backbone um, has a very specific way it wants to uh, interact with your uh, with an API. Uh, it can be overridden, but I wanted to stick with the constraints of uh, of Backbone just to see if Bottle can handle it. And it, it does handle it quite well. So when, uh, when Backbone um, you know, does a post of a, of a new object, whatever it is, in this case a to-do, uh, it actually posts JSON. And so to get at that JSON in Bottle, you're basically just saying, calling request.json, and that's it. And then you have a, uh, a dictionary uh, that, uh, that represents that JSON. And, and you can do whatever you want with that JSON. Uh, so in the case of like a, a new to, um, I actually need to assign it a new ID. I'm just gonna basically just call you ID four and, and that's it. Um, and that's, that's really it. I mean, um, there's really nothing much to it. Uh, just a couple helper methods to save um, 
you know, save my object to Redis. I won't go into that because it doesn't really have anything to do with bottle. Um, so that's, that's kind of it for like tr saving a new object. Uh, integration testing. Um, it's, uh, it's really easy to uh, write integration tests for bottle. I think it's, it's really, uh, with this way, it's, I'm, it's, it's not, it's kind of, uh, there's, no, there's nothing special, there, there's nothing specific about bottle. This, uh, this method just works with any WSGI app. Um, but yeah, to test, um, to test your, um, your API endpoints or your whatever endpoints in a bottle app, you're just gonna, um, you, uh, so in the, um, in my main um, file that represents my bottle app, I, I, um, I expose this app. Um, uh, this, uh, yeah, I expose this, uh, sorry, I'm missing something here, but there's a, you could say, um, from, you know, uh, to do app, um, import app, and then you have your, um, your app uh, object. And bottle app is, is fully implements a WSGI, um, object or whatever. And so you can just use, um, use the, uh, the web test um, library to, uh, to test it just like it's a WSGI app. Um, and uh, I, nah, there's really not much to you know, uh, show off here. It's just uh, you create your you create a dictionary uh, and then pass that into the post JSON, uh, the WSGI.postJSON, and um, uh, and that will post that post data as JSON to your uh, to your endpoint. That's about that's about it. Um, getting to dos. Uh, so this is this is the uh, this is the method that is called like when the page first loads or whenever you need to refresh the list of to dos on the page. Um, it uh, um, basically it's the same endpoint as the post to, to get one, except you're except ex it's accepting a uh, a get or it's expecting a get um, method, and basically the same authorization stuff, and um, and then the way you get um, query string parameters out of um, out of the uh, the the request coming in is just request.query.get. Actually, I think you, you can actually do it simpler than that, but request.query.get allows you to specify a, uh, a default value. So if it's not there, it'll just use that default. And then um, really there's not much to this um, other than just getting that stuff from Redis. Uh, and um, um, so here's my first, uh, the first issue I, I um, or sort of uh, gotcha I had with, with, um, with Bottle. Um, remember earlier I said that if you just uh, return um, a dictionary, it'll just automatically convert that to um, JSON for you. Well, in the case of, the, in, in the case of a, uh, a list of to-dos, um, Backbone.js wants your Data as a uh, as a um, an array, not a not a um, a dictionary, rather an array of dictionaries. And um, by default, um, uh, the bottle does not it it doesn't return an array as JSON. It, it does something else with it. So I had to kind of write a, write a custom little helper method to just say, hey, return this as JSON, um, and then manually. Do JSON dumps um, to turn that um, array into a uh, into JSON. Serving static files uh, is really easy, uh, and you know when you're in um, sort of dev mode, you, it's kind of nice to do that really easily. So um, this is how you do that in Bottle. You just uh, simply um, uh, in Bottle, you have all these little like special tokens you can pass in the route that sort of do special things, and, and this uh, this basically just says you know expect uh, 
a file name um, and then pass that, passes that in as, uh, as file name. Um, of course, in production, this just wouldn't get touched. In production, you, you know, Apache or Nginx would just serve those files directly. That's it. Are you in questions now? <laughs> Obviously, you're very clear and concise. Yes, I tried to keep it quick. Okay, here we go. Uh, you build all those uh, responses in like one kind of page, I guess, like one file, I guess, um, like all the routing and stuff like that. Yeah. How yeah, like and that that, that probably should have been like an item in the slides. I, which I probably thought of but didn't add just because I was trying to keep it short. But yeah, all this is one file. And that's kind of how, um, uh, oops, sorry, that's my test file. So app.py. Um, this is, this one file implements the whole bottle app. And that's kind of bottle, um, uh, like, there, it's optimized for creating uh, your your whole thing in just one file, um, and that's how I did it. You don't have to do it that way. You can, like like here, it says bottle app equals bottle. Um, I can simply I can um, import this module into other modules and then and then um, decorate methods um, using that bottle app um, attribute elsewhere, and you know build my own custom MVC kind of thing uh, using that. But you know, bottles documentation kind of all kind of assumes that you're just creating your whole thing in one file. And really it's, I mean, in my case, I didn't need it. I mean, this whole thing's under 200 lines of code. So, any other questions? I have a question. So it doesn't seem like it gives you a whole lot of stuff. I mean, if you were to do this project yourself and you were able to choose a framework, would you choose bottle? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, if if um, I would choose bottle if um, if it was a slightly simpler to do app, like no law, like this was like a little more like this wasn't like a really really simple to do app. You know, you had like you had to do login, you had to support filtering by tags, you had to support different uh, support different uh, sort types, um, and so you know if I was making a choice to do this. I'd probably do something in some other framework, and I won't say which one, but, um, but, um, but yeah, if it, was a, if it was a much simpler to-do app, I would probably choose Bottle just because I already know it. But, but then again, like Flask and Bottle, as from what I know, I guess we'll find out really soon, but I think Flask is pretty similar to Bottle, so you could also say, you know, you can make a case for choosing Flask for really simple stuff, too. I was going to ask, what do, you, what do you think differentiates Bottle from Flask as a microframework? I don't actually know because I haven't done anything Flask other than just like looked at the documentation. Well, that's the that, then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, what were the initial reasons you chose that your company chose to use Bottle in the first place? Um, it's uh, well, so when we first got started on this API project uh, that it's used for, uh, the requirements were simpler, <laughs> and and also we um, we. The, the few of us, including Roger, that were working on this, like, we felt like we knew Python, like pure Python more so than we knew like Django or something like that. Django is a lot of magic and stuff. So we felt comfortable just simply writing Python code. And so uh, I think it kind of came down to uh, Bottle and Flask, and I think we chose Bottle. This was many months ago. We chose Bottle just because I think it had been around for a little longer, and it seemed like it was slightly more mature at the time. Things have changed. I think you know maybe Flask has a little more momentum behind it now. Um, but uh, you know, um, yeah, we chose it for its simplicity, basically, and for the flexibility. Um, and um, we we're dealing with sort of a legacy database that we had to get data from. And so um, we, uh, 
it didn't make sense to use an ORM or a mod, like a, a framework that has a built-in model layer um, because it wouldn't work very well doing it that any way anyway. We had to just pretty much roll our own SQL and stuff. By the time you had done, you finally scalable, right? Or is it beyond the headache of having to write everything and do those things? You know, I, 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 like, like, you know, uh, the scalability of a web site or API generally comes down to the Python code that you're writing and and best practices in that regard more so than the particular framework. Um, but uh, it's it seems plenty fast. And I actually I did a little A B uh, um, little um, Apache bench benchmark. Um, on this to do app uh, last night, and I think I got something like um, on a single core running a single uh, G unicorn um, process. Um, I got like, and this is like a 2009 uh, MacBook. Um, I got like 60 requests a second or something like that. So pretty good, yeah. And that was actually, you know, going back to Redis and all that kind of stuff. So. All right, let's give Nathan a hand. Thanks.